Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to study about the quantum free electron theory. Uh, a part of it is the Sommerfeld model of metals. So Arnold Sommerfeld in the year 1927 proposed this uh, uh, Sommerfeld model of metals. Here, the electron inside the metal as, uh, is uh, taken as a, a free particle which is uh, moving inside a metallic box and uh, on the edges of the metal there are high walls which uh, restrict the ejection of electron from the metal box as you know electrons are confined to the metal box they can't come outside so electrons inside the metal are treated as uh, particles trapped inside the huge potential walls generated by the metal surfaces so these potential walls will block the escape of electron from the metal and electrons are absolutely free inside the metal they can roam anywhere and they are not localized they are not moving anywhere they are they are just moving inside the metal in any random direction and also he assumed that uh, the electrons are non-interacting non-interacting means uh, they don't interact with the neighboring electrons they don't interact with even positive ions of the lattice because uh, these electrons are after all ejected out from the parent metal atoms and hence the ejected electrons will make the atom a positive metal ion so these ejected out electrons are free to move inside the lattice and in this exercise what we are going to do is we are actually trying to calculate what are the wave functions of those electrons what are the standard energies for the electrons and how these energies are distributed and so far we have been talking about the electron in ground state ground state means no energy is supplied from outside and we absolutely neglect the the presence of temperature or in other words we treat the metal at absolute zero that is t equal to zero kelvin no temperature no electric field and no outside energy is given to the box the box is completely isolated and in this isolated box how the electrons are going to behave is what we call as the ground state of electrons so the ground state electron wave function and the distributed distributed energies etc uh, we are going to calculate in this uh, video so first of all we assume that the electrons are free they don't see the neighboring electrons and also they don't see the positive ions you can depict the situation of electrons inside the metal as uh, the one predicted here it is a one dimensional metal so one dimensional metal means we assume a metallic uh, cube of one dimension uh, it is extending from x equal to 0 to x equal to l and the electrons are actually free inside so here we assume non interacting electrons as we already mentioned non interacting means they don't see each other it is only to simplify the problem because if the electrons observe the neighbors definitely electron electron repulsion will be there electron positive and attraction will be there and these things are very difficult to handle especially for electrons which are of the order of avogadro number that is there will be around 10 power 23 into uh, 6.023 number of electrons per mole which is the Avogadro number so for 10 power 23 order of electrons it is not possible to Schrodinger, it is not possible to solve the Schrodinger wave equation so the problem is simplified by assuming n non interacting electrons this n is uh, of the order of Avogadro number as uh, they are non interacting it is not necessary to solve the Schrodinger wave equation for all the electrons if you can solve for one that is equally applicable for the rest of the electrons because they are non-interacting and we are going to solve this subject to the Pauli's exclusion principle Pauli's exclusion principle means uh, no two electrons in a given system can have same set of uh, quantum numbers even if they have same principal quantum number same arbit uh, azimuthal quantum number at least the spin quantum number will be different so one particular state will have different set of quantum numbers that's what Pauli's exclusion principle says so we are going to solve this problem and we also assume that uh, these electrons are subjected to a periodic boundary condition periodic boundary condition means generally electrons inside the metal are free to move inside it means electrons are not having any specific bias 
they don't prefer any specific uh, location or they don't uh, like any specific uh, location there is no attraction or repulsion so all the states inside the metal are equally probable for the electron in other words if the length of the solid or length of the metal is l then the wave function is identical no matter whether we take psi at x plus l or psi at x they must be the same it is something like uh, uh, a teacher teaching a class assume that assume that uh, there is a teacher and there was a corridor having a series of classes and if the teacher doesn't know the the face of the students this the teacher knows that these are the students so the lecture delivered in any specific class is not going to be different from the other classes so all classes will appear identical to a teacher just like that for the electron entire metal box looks similar and there is no difficulty or there is no specific attraction for the electron in reaching any specific point so this must be satisfied now we solve the schrodinger time independent wave equation for the electron inside this one dimensional metal box of length l here we choose the time independent case because the energy of the electron is not going to vary with time because we have assumed that it is the ground state it is not going to receive any electron any energy uh, from outside in terms of temperature or in terms of electric field so we suppose the case of electron with energy remaining constant in time so we are not going to uh, have any schrodinger time dependent wave equation we have only time independent case so we solve the schrodinger wave equation subject to this boundary condition as we have already mentioned as we have already solved the schrodinger wave equation in particle in one dimensional box and we found the solution as psi of x a equal to ae power ikx plus be power minus ikx of course one could easily get this and uh, another solution is also possible in some textbooks you will find a sin kx plus b cos kx both are equally good even this also holds this solution is chosen because it is clearly depicting the wave in a traveling wave in two directions basically if you look at this the a e power i k x with positive sign represents a plane wave in one dimension which is traveling along positive x direction whereas if you take the other part it is representing a one dimensional wave once again along the x direction but of course with negative direction means it is negative x direction and this is positive x direction so this typical solution depicts the electron matter wave with one component traveling along the positive x direction and another component traveling along the negative x direction as we all know that whenever two waves superpose with each other uh, in opposite directions they are going to cause standing waves so if we accept this kind of solution the standard wave of matter wave gets formed which clearly depicts that electron will have a pile up or uh, the so called uh, anti node uh, at some point of the given box given metal box or in other words electrons are going to form maximum probable regions inside the metal and of course the the nodes will depict zero displacement which depicts the electron probability zero means if at all you accept this wave function it is going to have maximum probable regions for electrons in some points and zero probable regions at some other points which is uh, actually violating the assumption because inside the metal we assume that electrons are free to move randomly in all directions at every point so there is no bias for the electron to stay or reject a specific place and hence this type of solution is what you call a standing wave solution is not acceptable in the current case so if you want to have electron moving freely one has to accept the traveling wave solution instead of a standing wave solution so traveling wave means you consider only one wave either this or this you can equally choose any of them so if you choose one of the wave definitely electron will be a traveling wave and definitely electron has equal probability in all the regions so there is no specific regions uh, there are no specific regions where the probability drops to zero so we proceed in that way so here we took the matter wave traveling along the positive x direction of course anyone take uh, uh, if at all they they are interested they can try uh, they can choose the other one also here i chose psi of x equal to ae power ikx as the as the solution if you want you can try with this also 
So we are going to take this subject to the boundary condition. That boundary condition is psi of x plus l equal to psi of x. And if you substitute this, that is a e power i k x plus l equal to a e power i k x. So if you equate both of them, you are going to get e power i k l is of course 1 or Or you can solve this because e power i k l is equal to 1 means e power plus or minus i 2 n pi where n taking values 1, 2, 3 other than 0 because if you take 0 this is going to give uh, a k becoming 0 which is practically not possible because wave function exists and hence we choose uh, any other value of uh, n other than 0. So this is i 2 n pi because it is after all cos 2 n pi plus or minus i sin 2 n pi anyway sin n pi is 0 so it is cos 2 n pi which is always plus 1 so this term is just plus 1 and hence kl is equal to plus or minus 2 n pi is the solution or the k takes plus or minus 2 n pi by l with n taking value so and so here one thing is clear that uh, electron is going to take uh, discrete momenta because after all k is uh, uh, indirectly representing the momentum because we know h cross k is after all p, the momentum of the electron. So h cross k equal to p says that the momentum of the electron is quantized. So electron, if it is inside the metal box, it is not going to take all momenta. It is going to take only certain quantized momenta. Right? And also we can observe a factor of 2. When we compare with this uh, particle in one dimensional box case, we had only n pi by L. There was no 2. This momentum is almost doubled because the electron is allowed to move in only one direction. We chose only positive x direction and we did not consider the negative x direction. If you restrict the electron to travel in both directions, then in that case the momentum gets halved. Right? So this uh, factor of 2 is coming because of the traveling wave solution whereas the the factor of 2 is absent in case of standing wave solution with the particle in one dimensional box so finally we have arrived at the solution for this psi of x which is a e power plus or minus i 2 n pi by l times x and in three dimensions if you choose the metal like a metallic box cube specifically because a cube is chosen only to simplify the situation there is no specific reason other than this one can choose even rectangular box also but the problem becomes difficult to solve so the reason for choosing this cube is only for mathematical simplicity so if you choose a, a cube uh, inside the cube you have an electron of course there are n number of uh, non interacting electrons so the wave function of any general electron can be written in 3d as a e power plus or minus i k x x this k x is the subscript uh, that the, i mean the x of the k x is uh, actually representing the x direction and similarly the y subscript of uh, k is representing the y direction similarly z direction so if you assume a, a, a cube of a metal at the origin it is going to have electrons with wave functions given by this a b and c are the just constants uh, the constants which we have obtained in the earlier case just like that here we are taking three different you may take a1 a2 a3 also so these constants these constants are of course uh, uh, arbitrary you can combine them to form some kind of synod the product can be taken as some synod or some other arbitrary constant and this case especially kx is of course given by 2 nx pi by l and ky is given by plus or minus 2 ny pi by l and similarly the z this is applicable for cube actually right and uh, the cube is chosen for the sake of simplicity as we have already mentioned finally the wave function could be written as uh, this form and this is the so called eigen function of uh, electron inside the 3d metal box similarly we can calculate the energies of these electrons by adding the energies contributed from x direction y direction and z direction as we know the energy of the electron ex is given by h cross square kx square by 2m it is in x direction it is in y direction and this is in z direction so the sum the total energy is contributed from uh, 
each direction it's actually um, this plus this plus this where uh, the m is the mass of electron and uh, in a moment after this we are going to have this m as effective mass of electron after we study this uh, uh, concept of uh, effective mass there it will become clear so for the time being you take it as just m which is the rest mass of electron for this discussion and in semiconductor physics of course we are going to have this as m star um, if m star becomes positive you call it as a hole and if m star becomes a negative you call it as a, an electron the effective mass is uh, considered there anyway we will come to this later now once again if you combine the energies of the electron we get this h cross square by 2m kx square plus ky square kz square as the sum and we are representing the total energy as e so the 2m e by h cross square becomes a case kx square ky square kz square just for uh, the sake of carrying this big expression we are calling this as k square and remember this expression is used later 2m e by h cross square is k square and finally the k square becomes kx square plus ky square plus kz square so this expression is similar to that of a, a sphere in Cartesian coordinate system with uh, x square plus y square plus z square is equal to k square. If it is x square plus y square plus z square equal to k square, you call it as a sphere which is centered at origin with radius k. As we are not in Cartesian coordinate system, but rather we are in a k space, k space. This is sometimes referred as Fourier space and Fermi space also inverse space because it has the dimension of one by length it is the inverse space right so this sphere is uh, something important for us because it is going to it is going to depict the number of allowed states inside the metal box for free electrons because all the electrons inside the metal cannot become free electron uh, and that was the failure of classical free electron theory in classical free electron theory, all the electrons were chosen as uh, uh, the free electrons. Of course, it is not true. Only some of the valence electrons are becoming uh, these free electrons. Only some of the electrons are becoming these valence electrons. And hence, one should not choose all the electrons because that will contribute to high specific heat which was the failure of uh, classical free electron theory so in this model they have overcome this by considering only some electrons but not all electrons so those free electrons how many are there in a given metal box of length l or edge l we are going to calculate this and this is sometimes referred as the density of states uh, of course uh, n is not the density of states dn by de which which in a moment we are going to calculate so we are going to calculate first uh, the number n how to calculate this number this is another big problem see we have this sphere which is not a continuous this is not a continuum actually so if you imagine this as a series of dots uh, or for the exam for the sake of example you take a, a wall poster of a movie from a longer distance, if you look at the wallpaper, you see some pictures, but uh, if you go closer and closer, you will find a series of dots in the image. Equally, you can look at the computer screen or any other display. If you take a very closer look, you will find pixels, RGB pixels, uh, which are simple dots. And when you look at, uh, look at the same thing from a, from a distance, you are going to see them as a picture, right? Just like that, if this sphere, if you look from the longer distance it is a continuous sphere but if you come closer and closer it is not going to be a, a sphere but it is rather a collection of uh, dots in order to understand this what we can do is we can assume a two-dimensional case so we know that ky and kx are in two dimensions as uh, k can cannot take all values of uh, uh, all all values it, as it takes only certain discrete values because k is quantized so k is going to take 2 n pi by l means 2 pi by l 4 pi by l 6 pi by l 8 pi by l and so on of course both positive and negative similarly same thing is applicable for ky also as we have chosen a cube so the situation is going to be something like this here it is the kx axis this is the ky axis 
and in two dimensions if you try to imagine this it is going to be something like a sphere of a let me try to draw this it is going to be something like a sphere of radius k because k square is equal to kx square plus ky square we are not going to consider k as that square it is two dimension so this area in two dimensions from a longer distance it may appear like a continuum but if you take a closer look it is not a continuum but it is a series of dots so each and every dot in this region each and every dot it is going to represent an allowed state for the electron it is something like the roll number in the class so if you have a roll number starting from 401 401 after that you will have 402 but there is no 401.1 or 401.3 or so just like that here also we have some allowed states so how many states are there with a given radius k if you want to calculate that you have to consider the number of points or dots falling within the circumference of this circle in two dimensions if you want to extend it to three dimensions you must imagine a sphere with this kind of dots in of course third dimension also if you can imagine this you are going to have a sphere with the number of dots and number of allowed states inside the metal of volume l cube are those which fall under the volume of this sphere with radius k so if you want to calculate this first of all you must consider the total area i am just calculating two dimension first so if you take this it is going to be just a pi r square r is nothing but radius so pi k square is going to be the area and if you divide this area with the, the area occupied by each and every dot if you look at any dot any arbitrary dot the dot is separated from its neighbor by 2 pi by l in both directions so the region that belongs to a specific dot is only the region from its midpoints with the neighbors so if you imagine this region it is going to be the space belonging to this particular point so it's obviously in two dimension this is 2 pi by l this is also 2 pi by l the width is 2 pi by l and length is also 2 pi by l so the area is going to be 2 pi by l whole square whereas in three dimensions it is going to be 2 pi by l whole cube please keep this in mind and we will use it later and now Pauli com Pauli comes into picture Pauli says that if there is one seat or one state allowed it can be shared by two electrons because electrons have up spin and down spin only two types of spins possible for electron plus half and minus half so in a given state that can be accommodated to two electrons so one with up spin another one with down spin that is plus half and minus half if it is so then the total number of seeds of free electrons inside the metal must be double because one seat or one dot can be allocated to two electrons if it is so then we can calculate the total number of points and we multiply by two a factor of two that gives us the total number of free electrons inside the given metal okay so the number of states are going to be two times the number of points inside a sphere of radius k in three dimensions okay so the number of electrons are just two times the volume of the sphere divided by the volume of each allowed state as we have already calculated the volume will be 2 pi by l whole cube in three dimensions in two dimensions it is 2 pi by l whole square which is the area and in one dimension it is just 2 pi by l which is the length so volume in three dimensions is volume volume in two dimensions is area volume in one dimension is length please keep this in mind so if there are n number of electrons if you assume capital n as the total number of free electrons inside a metal of a, a volume l cube then the n is going to be 2 into 4 pi by 3 k cube divided by 2 pi by l whole cube this we have already calculated because volume of the sphere is 4 third pi k cube and volume of each allowed state is this in two dimensions I have depicted that and in one dimension you can easily convince if this is the first dot with 2 pi by L of course before that there is a 0 2 pi by L next one is 4 pi by L so on so if you take the midpoints of neighbors from there to other neighbor 
so if you calculate this distance it is going to be 2 pi by l anywhere if you go further similarly in y direction also as we chose cube it will be 2 pi by l similarly in z direction also we chose cube so it is 2 pi by l whole cube so in 3d it is going to be 2 pi by l whole cube i hope it is clear to you now n equal to this and if you take this uh, l cube this factor is actually representing the volume of the sphere so volume uh, not sphere volume of the metal actually because l is the edge of uh, the metallic cube so this l cube is simply replaced with v then n is equal to 1 by 3 pi square 2 into 4 8 gone we are left with 3 and this is pi pi cube so we have left with pi square in the denominator so 1 by 3 pi square k cube into v volume of the cube metal cube or n by v is nothing but 1 by 3 pi square k cube this n by v a number by volume which is number per unit volume so the total number of free electrons per unit volume of metal is depicted by this expression here it is in terms of k but we are not interested in k as k is not directly measurable we are interested in terms of energy e recall i said that i will be using this k once again later because k square is equal to 2 m e by h cross square this was the expression i have showed you earlier i said that i am going to use this expression 2 m e by h cross square equal to k square so k is nothing but square root 2 m e by h cross square that i will use here so uh, i'll use it here in a moment this n by v is actually number per unit volume i'll represent this as n small n so this small n is the number of free electrons available inside the metal per unit volume of the metal so then n is equal to 1 by 3 pi square k cube and this k i am rewriting as 2 mb by h cross square under root and this is whole cube uh, so n is going to be just 1 by 3 pi square 2 m by h cross square i have taken this 2 m by h cross square as this is square root it becomes power 1 by 2 2 m by h cross square power 1 by 2 and whole cube so it becomes 2 m by h cross square whole power 3 by 2 2 m by h cross square whole power 3 by 2 and we are left with uh, e power 3 by 2 this is the n so this expression tells you the number of free electrons per unit volume of the metal up to top energy e so e is the energy so you know electron energy starts from the lowest which is uh, h square by 8 ml square uh, next one is 4h square by 8 ml square next is 9h square by 8 ml square we have depicted these energies in particle and one dimensional box so here also they are going to be discrete and those energies if you start filling with these electrons the topmost filled electron energy level if you call this as e then this n represents the total number of electrons free electrons per unit volume of that particular metal so the number of states of free electrons up to energy this is the topmost energy now after calculating this we derive an expression called the density of states which is uh, just a d n by d it's uh, just a differentiation of the earlier derived expression n this expression n we are going to derive differentiate with respect to e as you know this 1 by 3 pi square 2 m by h cross square all these terms are constants and we don't have to bother with respect to e so this derivative of e power 3 by 2 is 3 by 2 e power 3 by 2 minus 1 which is root e so 3 by 2 root e is the expression and just by cancelling 3 we can easily get the z of e the density of states as dn by de is equal to 1 by 2 pi square 2 m by h cross square power 3 by 2 root e and surprisingly the energy levels and the density of states are not linear they are square root connected so if you sketch this z of e with respect to e it is going to be a half parabola centered about the e axis this half parabola says that uh, the gap between neighbors or the density density means uh, let us say between e and e plus d e how many number of states are available if you calculate that that e and e plus d e difference the number of allowed state actually increases with this order we can see so in the lower area we have the density smaller as we increase the energy the density becomes higher and higher so more number of states will be accommodated within the same energy gap de so if you consider the de at larger value of e this is one de and if you consider the same de at lower value the density here is smaller whereas the density 
on the right hand side it will be larger so more number of states will be available at higher energies and the synopsis of uh, this whole class is uh, only three things first thing is the ground state wave function of electron we have calculated as uh, psi equal to psi naught e power i k x x k y y of course one can add plus or minus so this is the ground state wave function and similarly k takes values of n pi by l here also you can add plus or minus and this is the total energy of electron inside the metal box this is the ground state eigen energy and uh, remember this energy is not continuous as uh, k's are not continuous k's are discrete and same thing is applicable to momentum of electron